California women won their right to vote in 1911, and with that victory, California became the foremost democracy in the world, where over half a million women could now vote. With some of their Western sisters, California women won this right to vote nine years before the rest of American women would vote. The California suffrage campaign is unique for its short eight-month duration, for the scope and the diversity of people. However, in 1911, it was also remarkable for its innovations and strategies. The three words, votes for women, may seem tame and obvious today, but in 1911, they ignited a political controversy whose flames still burn in many parts of the world today. Votes for Women was first proposed in 1848 by Elizabeth Cady Stanton at Seneca Falls, New York. But it was the West that led the way for suffrage rights. Wyoming in 1869, followed by Utah, Idaho, and Colorado. Western men had depended upon the courage and partnership of women in the settlement of the untamed West. These men knew that equality was not simply a right, it was a necessity. In the gold-rich, powerful California, the women recognized these early suffrage victories and pushed for their own rights to equality. However, the 1896 suffrage amendment went down to defeat by over 20,000 votes. The struggle for California suffrage would last for 15 more years as women reorganized and rededicated themselves to the rightness of their cause. Lillian Coffin, a magnetic and spirited businesswoman and highly influential lobbyist, knew the legislators by name. In a colorful march, she led 300 women to meet with lawmakers and presented their case. Persistent pressure from passionate women and supportive men influenced lawmakers. Finally, on February 2, 1911, the state, Senate, and House voted to place woman suffrage on a special October 1911 election. With only eight months to Election Day, California women faced a whirlwind campaign in a state over 1,000 miles long and rich in diversity. Elizabeth Watson, inspiring speaker and organizer who had been active in the 1896 campaign, invited women leaders from the state's various organizations to unite and devise a plan for victory. Charlotte Whitney, college-educated reformer and the brilliant president of the important College Equal Suffrage League. Maud Younger, a wealthy woman whose compassion and commitment to the working women brought her to work for their rights. Catherine Edson, an advocate for labor and health measures and Clara Foltz, the fiery Los Angeles lawyer who inspired other women to give all for suffrage. These younger organizers brought renewed energy, new ideas, and innovative tactics to the depleted 1896 suffrage movement. Without further ado, let us hear from the various sections of our state. So, first, let's start with the two domains of activity. In the suffrage vote of 96, the North was so overwhelming against a woman's right to vote that even the small victories in the South could not compensate. That is what must change. You women in the North have many more established suffrage groups. So you take all areas north of the Tehachapi Mountains, and we in the South will saturate the cities, towns, and farms in the rest of the state. The emancipation of women may not have begun with the vote, but rather when they mounted a good horse and realized how different and fine the view. From the back of a horse, the world looked wider. Joyce Gibson Roach. As the Victorian age turned into the first decade of the new 20th century, California moved from a rugged frontier to a cultivated and cultured state, one marketed as a paradise and as a land of opportunity. Leaving behind the Eastern images of womanhood and dependence on men, Many women found that the land out west offered new freedoms and possibilities. Oil and oranges, sun and verdant fields, health and wealth, and the promise of prosperity attracted a migration of stable, middle-class citizens, mostly from the farming states of the Midwest. Completion of two railroad lines brought 50,000 new residents a year. In Los Angeles alone, the population grew from 50,000 in 1900 to 320,000 by 1910, a six-fold increase. The advance in irrigation systems produced a shift from small family farms to grand ranches. 
Industries previously performed by women in their homes became major manufacturing companies, canning, textiles, food services. Displaced from their traditional roles in the home and on the farm, young women moved to the cities to work in those industries formerly associated with the home. Women also branched out into retail and clerical positions. These businesses increased the clerical workforce in California 50% in one decade. Women desired more education to become teachers, nurses, business professionals, and California met that need. Stanford University opened as a co-educational institution. Women graduates at Stanford grew from eight in 1895 to over 200 in 1910. As women assumed greater participation in their society, their lack of political equality became more obviously unjust, and by 1911, the right to equal suffrage was a strong battle cry. The time was ripe for a full-fledged campaign. <laughs>